If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. In this episode of Mind Pump, for the first 20 minutes, Adam, Justin, and- I'm pr- Justin now. Justin. I don't know. I said just that a, Just a moron. Adam, Justin Gigolo. <laughs> Adam, hey, everywhere I go. Adam, Justin, and President Sal talk about. Oh, oh God. The president. First, we talk I mean, about. Dittmar might have. We're never going to hear that. Dimitar might have just yeah. uh, dethroned we you. We talk about the president poll on our Facebook forum. We love our forum, and they, yeah. they did a, they did a poll fun. there who they would want to be president. Uh, we also talk about. You know Matt, what? Why don't you. Why don't hashtag you tell, not Adam. Since you're bringing up the forum right now, why don't you tell everybody what we're going to do with the forum? Oh, okay. It's a good time. So. This month uh, is your last chance ever to be able to get into our forum by paying $97 once for life. So in other words, if you pay $97, bucks, you are in our forum forever. After this month, it's going to be an annual fee, so you'll, you'll have to pay it every single year. But if you enroll this month, $97 once. Our forum is awesome. It's freaking awesome. We've got some really smart people on there. Uh, we are on there ourselves every single day. It's a fun group. It's a great place to get support for fitness. There's a lot of funny stuff that gets posted on there. It's like a reflection of the show right? a lot of times. Extension so, of it. Yeah, so it's pretty cool. So uh, so we talk about uh, Matt Lauer's creepy button. That's disgusting. <laughs> Son of a bitch. I think I mentioned uh, Russell Simmons in that too. Right. Yeah. Another disgusting man. They're all just going down. And we, we started on Russell Simmons because he just, he just, uh, that just recently came yeah, out yesterday, did. right? And we talk about uh, the conspiracy theories behind this Hollywood meltdown. Yeah. Adam thinks someone else is behind all this. I think there's another person behind all this. Who's causing all these people to go down? Or are they, right? are they in bed together? Probably. <laughs> the earth is flat. Then Justin talks about the Punisher. Either that or we call him the Punisher. Yeah. And then we talk about my return to the steam room. Oh, oh shit. Oh, it's The battle continues. <laughs> it's naked. Uh, we also mention uh, a couple of our sponsors. We mention Organifi. Now, if you go to OrganifiShop.com forward slash Mind Pump, you'll get a massive discount on their products. We also mention Thrive Market. Uh, Thrive Market has all non-GMO products and lots of organic products, including skin products. Um, we actually uh, came up with an idea in this episode. You're going to like that one. If you go to thrivemarket.com forward slash mind pump, here's what you'll get. One month free membership, $20 off your first three orders of $49 or more and free shipping. Then we get into the question. So the first question was, this particular individual has been consuming a particular type of protein powder, Dimatize ISO 100, in fact, every single day for a Not while. Not specific at all. And they've been taking, <laughs> uh, and it's got sucralose in it. All of a sudden, they can't digest it. It just bothers their stomach. They want to take a vegan protein, but they all taste like dirt. What do we recommend in terms of protein and what may be going on? How come all of a sudden they can't digest something that they've always been able to digest? God digest made dirt and dirt don't In hurt. the past. Uh, the next question was, this particular individual loves our show, loves how we talk about listening to our body, but wants to know if she's listening to her body or if she's just making excuses. Uh, like for example, you know, I'm not working out today. Am I listening to my body or am I just lazy right now? The next question was, have Justin, Adam, or myself ever injured a client? The answer is yes. Ugh. And uh, you're going to love hearing about who's injured the most people. <laughs> Why you, you shouldn't be laughing, Justin? <laughs> was it me? The final question is: Unless uh, it's like emotionally, is it possible for a person to have an unhealthy mind but have a healthy body? Can you separate the two, or all, is it all the same? Find out in this episode. Of course, I did mention the forum is going to be going up again. This is your last chance. Ninety-seven dollars once to get in. Oh, also, I forgot to mention this. If you enroll in any MAPS program or MAPS bundle, you'll get an offer right then and there to get 50% off the price of the forum as well. So we got some great stuff going on. Just go to mindpumpmedia.com. 
toes. We haven't even announced on the show all the different uh, clothes More that we have. We have you. dad hats. We have the the trucker bills. We've got the. Uh, oh, that's right. We've got the girls shirts that all the girls have been asking for like crazy. Like we haven't made girls shirts. We're hooking you up, right? So there's a long sleeve. I think there's a short sleeve also, and then there's a new uh, we train your trainer mm. uh, mind pump shirt, <laughs> black and gray. It's a great shirt. So a bunch so, of cool apparel. Yeah, yeah. So there's a bunch of apparel that on, on the website. Uh, what else? What else did you say, Doug? That's it. Oh, oh and then, we're doing questions and answers. The quads. On- Oh yeah, on YouTube. The YouTube. Yeah, so we have we have qua like video quas on a YouTube week right now. We do like one question, but we go into detail on that. On the we video, have a lot of fun too because you get to see us. So if you haven't gone over to YouTube yet, uh, you're missing out. We're doing some cool stuff there. For the Q and A episodes there, you can actually find the qua episodes and then ask questions underneath in the comments. In the comments, and yeah. then if we pick your question, we'll answer it in the following. Video episodes. So. Just more ways to end up on the show. Boom. There you Absolutely. Go. And it's t-shirt time. Right. Awesome. So we had 12 reviews this last week. Ooh, kind of soft. That's weak. Yeah, a little weak. And there's going to be four shirts going out. Thanksgiving hangover, bro. Yeah. Thanksgiving yep. hangover. That's what it is. People feel guilty. So the four winners are <laughs> Fit Forward Mom, us. Murphy Motivation, Lindsay Zoe, MP Doherty, and you're all winners. So send the name I just read to iTunes at mindpumpmedia.com. Send your shirt size, your shipping dr- address, and we'll get that right out to you. Thanks, everybody. I remember my best friend and I, this is when we had my place, just the two of us, and we were single. And like we and we had just both came off of relationships, and we were fucking gamers, dude. Like We worked all day, 9 to 5. We came home, we gamed till midnight. Like That was like fucking what we did. That is so yeah. weird. And we love life. Dude. And you're drinking love all life. kinds of Make, rock stars bro, and shit. Bro, have my house, making six figures, get video gaming fucking all night long, have a oh, great yeah. job that you're I just love. just playing. Oh, dude, I was on top of the world. And I remember yeah. telling my, my buddy and I, we both had this conversation like, Will always do this. You're like, I wish no we were woman. Gay. We're like, no yeah. woman is ever yeah. going to come between oh this. God, this could dude. be every day. Yes, that's yeah. terrible. It was every day, bro. Yeah. We were ranked in shit. We were that's that terrible. That legit. <laughs> yes, yes. We don't need to get laid. We're just going to play video games. Yeah. It sounds like such a waste of time. But yeah, for you it's though, addicting. Yeah, yeah, when you see when you see people and I, on the outside. So Bradley is like on another level of that. Like, so he's was worse. He's than all I was. consoles. Yeah, right? yeah. And I always know when someone's bad, like badly, because they're right away they're like, so what's your handle? You know, let's uh, you yeah. right away. So I go look your stats. What was, your, what was yeah, it like? They're gonna peep you out. I was a mushroom stamper. Mushroom. Uh, stamper. Oh my god! Of course you were. <laughs> yeah. Mushroom stamper. Yeah, that's such a video. The gamer, first though. one too. I'm telling you, like, so mine was like, I didn't yeah, have to put it. Like I didn't have to put Diggler. any. I didn't have to put any. That's how 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 old school I am. Is you, like now, if you try to take that handle, it's probably been taken by a thousand different ways with manipulating. Do you guys that. remember your first email? Address? Because remember when you first get your first one, you're a kid, and so, you're trying oh, to make it yeah. sound cool? I don't know if I remember that. Dude, I just talked to Katrina. Yeah, I do remember that. Hot chicks for me. Hot chicks. No, yeah, what? Yeah. Hot, hot chicks, chicks for me. Hot chicks for me at, uh, at uh, Yahoo.com. Like Hotmail? Uh, that yeah. was hot your email? Yeah. first. Yeah. Hot. <laughs> dude, what did you think? Dude, when, do? You're, when you're fucking, hot mail When now. you're like 17 years old, you that's the clever things you come up with. So, you, you know, know you know what's funny? I so, thought it was super clever then. So, my brother, my brother. Not thinking like a businessman, right? Yeah. So, when we first got our computer or whatever at the house, and my mom wanted to get her first email she didn't know how to do it so she asked my brother who at the time was probably i don't know 13 or something like that mm. so she's like hey can you get make me an email address he's like sure no problem so he gave her italian rage, <laughs> that was, <laughs> that was italian rage. to my mom yeah he <laughs> <laughs> was totally it was a dig you know what i mean yeah here you yeah, go mom yeah, yeah, yeah. we'll call you italian rage yeah <laughs> take that so my mom had that one for that's hilarious i swear to god for like 10 years dude yeah and so every time she oh, gets, I had mine so for a long time. Well, you know what? I didn't even. So I told Katrina this. We were talking about this because she was teasing me. Uh, we were looking at my battery life and like where all my time is spent. You know, like fucking forty percent Instagram, like ten yeah. percent, like all this and that. And the very bottom is email. And she always busts my chops for not answering. Check the email. Because oh, I never check God. my emails. And I'm like, you know why I that forget is? That I have email. Well, here's the reason why. Say, nineteen years old or twenty Aren't years you old. Supposed to delete all of them. Well, who, listen. Who does that? At twenty years old, I was at twenty four already. At twenty four, they had whatever. What do you call that? An intro web or whatever that where it's inside the company yeah, or with it. Yeah. So it was. It was. Uh, everyone was. You know, Adam FM five oh four at at Hillsdale or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like it was all of our within the company. It wasn't like a real email. Yeah, no yeah, one yeah. else could email me except for my boss and boss. So my whole so ten years from twenty to th- almost you didn't thirty. Use actual email. I never used an actual email yeah, because here. anything that was regarded to business or important to me that I need would I need to check my email it was all coming through uh, yeah. my work email exactly so then when I when I got rid of that I never was like I never trained myself to have this habit like a lot of people like Katrina's like she's crazy to me she runs I think like 
10 emails, you know? And just filters them constantly. And she's like on top of all of them. Dude, there, there are, so there's, there's this, I'm going to sound like such a fucking old fuddy-duddy, yeah. but apparently there's ways of organizing your email. I don't know. It's all in the same area. <laughs> I don't know. It's a mystery. I, I open it up and it's like, <laughs> you have 10,000 emails. Right, you see, like, you open okay. it up and it says folders yeah. here. Yeah, <laughs> like, apparently you can make folders. You're sophisticated. Yeah, I don't know if, you, I don't know if yeah. you guys knew that or not. No, you can do all that. And I, you know what I just recently like started making a habit is, is because what I would do is I start an email address, never use it, piles up till there's 3,000 plus emails. Then you move to another one. Then I move to yeah. another one. And I just keep doing that, right? Yeah. So finally, and Katrina's like been yelling at me about this, right? She's yeah. like, listen, we're going to clean up this email. That's how your identity this gets stolen. That. Right, right. Yeah. And she's yeah. like, so you're going to do this one and you're going to unsubscribe. Every time you see an email that you don't want to open, open dude. it, go to the bottom, unsubscribe. Oh my God. I will trump all that, dude. I, I went, this was actually yesterday. I was just going down memory lane and I was thinking, you know, I'm getting back into music and I was going to look at, you know, I knew that our old band profile was on MySpace and I'm like, does MySpace even still exist? Right. And so I'm going on there and I'm looking. I'm like, holy shit, it's still there. And like our songs are there. And so I actually like- Is it like, still an active community? Yeah, I mean, it's active. People are, I don't know how active. Oh my God, You know, Doug. it might be just like everybody that- Doug, can you please pull up? Everybody that yes, like opened my, it, please, you please know, God. one point- We all have MySpaces. I have MySpaces. I didn't. I never I'm did. not even on there because like they replaced me with some guy. Yeah, oh, like they, after I left they erased, the band, they erased your memory. No, but they have like my song on there and everything. But they took your face off of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like so. It's like the Soviet era pictures. Yeah. You ever seen those old pictures from like the Soviet MySpace. Union, where all of a sudden like they'll take out this like general. Yeah. He's no longer in the picture, and they replace it with like a dog or something like that because <laughs> they killed him. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying, dude. But so I, I, I was going through it and like you could see like old friends that, that used to you know be attached to and stuff and i was like oh my god is my roommate from college like i lived with him for like a year or two and uh so i just like fucked with him like like to email him through there <laughs> i was like i was like hey man i saw that he was like into um you know graphic design he had some company that he was like running for all this stuff I'm like hey man i can really use your services and at the end i was like you redheaded motherfucker yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like is that how you sign all your e all your emails and what the fuck is this myspace dude does this even still exist <laughs> oh it was the funniest thing that's ever. awesome yeah that's awesome dude so um adam you got a little angry last night what on the forum <laughs> Oh uh, yeah, like you got butt hurt. <laughs> so I didn't get it on until uh, when I saw I saw your comment. I was like, <laughs> I was, Dude, dying I was like, get the fuck out of here with this. Okay, so, so somebody forum, somebody posts on the forum. Who would you elect for president? Who would you elect for president? And they've got all of us, including Doug. They've got Dimitar on Who's there. One of our forum members. And then they got who else? They have on there. I think that's it. It was right? like The Rock or something. No, 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 no. I think it was just the us. Bottom. Yeah. I think it was just us. It was all of us, and I and thought one or two other. Yeah, yeah, one or two other people. Some, yeah. And I had like random ones. I was like dead last with two votes, and I was like, <laughs> <laughs> "Fuck you!" I was like, "I get it." Yeah. Fuck you guys! Like, 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 are you scared kidding me right you. now? Like, hey, all yeah. the rest of these these guys are pussies. They They're can't scared. run this country. Listen, you need somebody who's going to grab this. Listen, dude. everybody knows so that good. you would be a fucking dictator. Yeah, yeah. You wouldn't be a president. You'd be a dictator. You'd make crazy rules and laws be an asshole okay okay so okay. you put the dick in dictator so i think if uh, if out of the three of us if any of us were to be most like donald trump 100 percent, it would be me uh, for sure so if you yeah, don't you, like yeah you definitely you, tweet you, some shit right, like, right, we, right. Yeah. i would do some we're crazy. already living in this yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. we don't need I, th I think that that's probably so i get it so if you're like super anti-trump and you're like i bet adam would be kind of like that like you're fucking right i it get was, why you didn't vote for it me. was cracking me up because you said that you're like oh fuck you guys man fuck Only you two guys votes. man and then a bunch of you know what it is though because then you're partially joking right yeah i know a bunch of four members are underneath like commenting like oh no man no man i was gonna vote for you but like yeah they, you know, they try I, to justify I like, it. I had to right? like think about well, it. Well, Sal's really, yeah. you know, he talks like that. Yeah. I'm like, get the fuck out of here, dude. Get out of here. Yeah, so, uh, I, so I'm the president, basically. Yeah, no, I know. That was going neck and neck. Hey, you know, can I just say there. something? I would never, ever want to do that. Ever. No. But I want to do that shit. Yeah. Hell no. Can you imagine being president knowing all this shit that they. Bro. You imagine you walk in there and they're like, okay, we cool. couldn't even protect you. Yeah, now that There's you're. No way. Oh, okay. Welcome. You just got inaugurated. Come on in. Have a seat. Okay. So we're the ones that actually run the country. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. This is what you're going to yeah. say. Everybody's, Everybody's going to hate you, and here you go. No, if you say I would, anything, never, we'll I would never, ever, ever even. That would never be a goal of mine. You know? Fuck no. no. You don't make we're enough money for that. You couldn't pay me yeah. enough. Yeah. Well, they don't do it. You know what it is? It's Everybody not, hates you, too. It's like, no matter what you do, you do something. become the president, I don't think you ever need money again, right? Like then everyone always says it like right the position is what do they make like three hundred thousand a year so uh, four hundred four hundred thousand a year yeah. yeah so it's like bullshit money right but all those guys 
all made millions of dollars in previous you know professions or entrepreneurs. Well, it's, right? it's professional politicians. It's they make a lot of money afterwards thing. doing speeches and books. And books. Oh, yeah, yeah. Bullshit. yeah yeah well that's all that and that's all side millions you just want to be make. known in history the real thing that's is that you're the fucking is. president yeah. bro you yeah. have all the power think of anything in your mind that sounds ridiculous like power you thing. could have that done yeah that's like, a, bro that's a dictator see this is what you don't understand <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah <laughs> that's yeah, not yeah. the president bro yeah, the president <laughs> doesn't have those powers in real life adam thinks it's king yeah. he doesn't want to be the president he wants to be the king yeah. of america yeah. you peasants today we passed the law Making president king <laughs> or a monarchy again. Oh, man. Yeah, you just do cool shit. You Make America saying? monarchy again. Yeah. Make America monarchy again. <laughs> Fuck. Vote Adam. That yeah. Justin got second place, which I thought I was was, uh, was pretty. It was interesting. That was interesting. That I, went, was, I was like, he's the, you know what? That didn't, that didn't surprise me uh. because he's the favorite. And it, just because we're talking about politics, everybody so, thinks he's such a nice just guy. Like, he'll be the guy that's just like in front saying dumb shit, and then you know, <laughs> I, like I'll basically be up there for like a, a total of like uh, maybe thirty seconds, like my speech, and so everybody will move on with their day, and they'll be like, "Ah, oh, you're like the male, Phew! the male, yeah. male version of girl next door." You know? like the girl next. You're just like the girl next door. You dude. know, yeah. like you can hug me. Yeah, like, <laughs> I'm gonna make America soft again. <laughs> See, now yeah. I know if I ever become president, I'm gonna make Adam my VP because then nobody will kill me. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Like, let's kill Sal. Like, yeah. Adam will be president then. Yeah. Fuck that. Yeah. Better leave him alone. Uh, did you guys see the news? So we just talked about this recently. Oh, God, dude. So where's, we the, where's, about- the, where's, the, where's the cue the sound, Justin? Uh, so what? <sighs> what? What was the sound? Cue the, the, the fucking another one bites the dust. Oh, yeah. There it is. Another one got bit in the nuts. Ow. So Matt Lauer fired, which, by the way, more information comes out. He's fucking disgusting. Dude. He had a he had a button under his desk. Did you read about this? No, I didn't. He has a button under his desk that locks the door. Creepy. What? Yes, dude. Creepy motherfucker. That's what they're saying. So apparently this woman says that she walked in, because you know he's a man in power, right? Uh, she walked in his office and he's like, take off your blouse or whatever. And she's like, oh, I don't want to try to leave. And he locks the door with the button. And then he convinces her to like, he like has sex with her. And then apparently she passes out. So I don't know what that's like. Uh, yeah, it's pretty crazy. And then what's, what's crazier, and I'll tell you why this is crazy. What's crazier is a video comes out where they're kind of off, like the cameras are off, but they're still mic'd up. And so you can see him on video. And Matt Lauer is commenting to, I think it's Katie Couric. And he's telling her, he goes, yeah, he goes, bend over again. He goes, it looks nice down your blouse or something like that on camera. And this video's like, 10 or 12 years old. So let me tell you why that's crazy. Yeah. Where's this fucking video been this whole time? Right. Yeah, yeah. Why is it coming? Stored. All of a sudden, they're like, released. Hmm. You said it's like Tiny. 10 years old? It's old. It's an older video. Doug, Google, when when did Netflix start? Oh, you think Netflix is- I'm going to uh, keep going into my conspiracy. I believe it, dude. I believe uh, yeah. it. Let's, a, let's confirm it right here. Let's get the tinfoil I mean, don't on. you think it'll be a little yeah. crazy if it's 10 years ago? Is this right is the whole big data ne- stuff. Netflix is like, this is what we're going to do. I mean, We're going to take out all the big dogs. Right, and you got to think, if, if you're a gangster, you had to have a vision f- that big that long ago. August 29th, 1997. Whoa. Fucking ten years ago on the dot, dude. Not, Actually, no, that's th- that'd be twenty. Oh, twenty years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Math is fun. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. well, Doug's, Doug's surprise save gave me away. I, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I committed before. I'm supposed to be the numbers guy. And I, I that. Like Doug, Actually, did, Doug was like, "Whoa!" I was like, "Yeah, oh, no. it must be right on." <laughs> this is how you know when you're old. You look at when, when you start to get old, worth a lot of money. You look at years and you start to think that they're not as far. Like 1997 for me is like, oh, that's a little while ago. That's that's what I that's felt a like a long time ago, bro. <laughs> was Seventeen. That's crazy. They yeah. were they were not around in ninety seven. They were started yeah. in ninety seven. But wow, yeah. hustling, trying to. Do kick you remember? I remember. Ass. So we lived. But uh, they must have been shit in ninety seven. So no, you want to know what they were? Redbox came out first, right? No, 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 no. no I no, thought no. it was like no, the same no, time. No, no, no. no Redbox. No, no. Netflix was first. No, no. Redbox is so? the one you get the DVDs. Yeah, bro. yeah, but yeah, but Netflix was first. Really? Yes. No. Yes. Do do Redbox. Yeah. Let's look at I that. I guarantee Redbox is afterwards. All right. I know, yeah. Netflix. So we were when we lived. So you think the- Netflix is behind all this? All these accusations? All this stuff coming out? I do. I do. So I have a different conspiracy theory. Two thousand two. Uh, you're, right. you're right. Yes. All right. You're right. Sorry. Fine. So here's what I think. I think. Here's my conspiracy theory. I think it's Trump. You think he's shaking it up? I think because, because because I, I could see that because, because Hollywood, Hollywood, Hollywood Hollywood's all as liberal the as they come. Oh yeah. well, and Hollywood's been has gone has gone after him from day one, and now 
what, what a lot of people don't realize is He's trying to turn the tide after September 11th. Well, first of all, before September God, 11th, see, you know, you're right. I, see, I would do some shit like well, this. Well, hold on. I see. That's I why do. you're not going to be president. Know, it's just, it's just nobody voted for you. Yeah. <laughs> that's why you don't get win. you don't win, bro. Uh, so, so here's the thing. It's all right. Here's the thing. Well, a lot of people don't realize this now. Before September 11th, <clears throat> the, the FBI and CIA has always done a lot of shady shit. And they, the president has used them or people in power have used them to do things that they probably shouldn't have done, you know, things without the court and all that stuff. But after September 11th, we actually signed acts that makes these powers like openly legal. And what they are is that if the president or someone in government, high official in government, can literally just by saying, go investigate this person, go eavesdrop on them, go listen to their phone calls, whatever, all under the guise of terrorism, which doesn't matter because nobody's checking on them, so they can say this about anybody. Right, right. Now the president has so much fucking power. Now if you're the president and you're the commander in chief and you want to fuck with your political en- enemies or you want to fuck with whoever who's talking shit about you, you can literally call these people up, the NSA, whoever you want and be like, "Look, I want you to spy on, you know, Matt Lauer. I want you to spy on this person. I want you to get, you know, show me everything that you can find on them." And you can use it and no court or anybody is going to say anything unless they they find out that you're doing it and then they'd have to take you to court or whatever and that would that would never happen. So I think Trump is fucking taking out Hollywood because they've been so anti. Because you're seeing everybody. Another Russell Simmons. Russell Simmons just stepped down for sexual harassment allegations from something that happened back in 1991. Well, have has anyone put the conspiracy together? Wow. Like, have, can you go back through and see how are they all non-Trump supporters? All come on, all of them, all well, of them. Fucking well, I, I, I mean, I believe that. I could believe that. I just don't know for a fact. Bro, Do you know if yeah. that? Yeah, I, I mean, I'm not saying this is true. By the way, I'm just I'm I'm making up a conspiracy here. But that my conspiracy makes more sense than Netflix. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, you think so? I think so, dude. I, it's really weird. You know, it's funny. Hillary Clinton, who got the Democratic, uh, you know, nom- she was the nominee, obviously for for uh, for the Democratic ticket. She was going against Bernie Sanders. Mm-hmm. She, her people and her, because the Clintons are very powerful. That is like uh, that's like political they pocketed the DNC. That's political huh? royalty. Like you got yeah. the Clintons, the Bush family, the Kennedys. Like she, they fucking rigged the whole thing so yeah. she would win the primaries. And it's all it's all legit. I'm not making this up. It's no, not a conspiracy. Yeah. All they legitimately rigged that shit against Bernie Sanders so she would win. This whole the whole system is fucking hilarious. Which is why I was so shocked when Trump won because I'm like, how? that kind of shows that it's not as rigged as I thought it was. Because how did he win? Yeah, unless they want us to think. Well, it's that's not. what surprised everybody. <clears throat> yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Well, yeah, I also think that's the power of social media now. You know, Could be. that's the difference. I mean, you can when you're reaching millions of people on on Instagram now and, and Facebook, <sighs> you like can you can only just, delete so many votes. I right, guess. Right. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> yeah right. it's like oh no. Yeah. So now, so yeah, Russell Simmons now he had to step down. Now, Russell, I can't wait to see who's next. Yeah, what would, have you read about what he did? I just you yeah. Said- so he <clears throat> apparently was with some I don't know who was some woman. They went to dinner, and his driver picked him up, and then she gave the guy his address, and he said something like, "No, we're going to my house." And she was like really intimidated, and she said, "Well, I want to go home." And he goes, "No, you're just going to come to my house." So they went to his house. He took her upstairs, and <clears throat> basically like told her like we're going to have sex, and she did have sex with him. Because she was so intimidated by him. And so now she's saying she felt like she was intimidated into having sex. And of course, she, he didn't like forcibly, physically, you know, hold her down or anything like that. But she's talking about how, how he made her feel. He, I guess he locked the door in the car too, wouldn't let her get out and stuff like that. So, but this is back in 1990 something. I don't know. I think it was 91. So it was a while ago. Damn. Yeah. So it's weird and for because, him to step down like that without defending himself. You know that there's got to be some truth to that. Well, that's the other thing. I wonder if, because here's the thing if I'm Russell Simmons, okay, if I'm up, I'm Russell Simmons and some fucking, yeah, well, just pick and some yeah, yeah. person says that about me, I'm going to be like, yeah, oh yeah, well, fuck you. Anybody can say that, right? Yeah. I wonder if somebody presented to him and said, look, this is going to come Here's out. Here's your option. If, yeah, if you yeah. don't step down, we're yeah. going to release this video. I guarantee it was like that. God, it's yeah, fucking it's weird. Creepy. It's like, it's like, yeah. It's the mafia. so crazy. It is. Yeah. And I love it. We got the mafia it's running like, our country it's now. It's Trump and the Netflix mafia, dude. Take them all. Together. <laughs> the Netflix mafia. <laughs> Take them all down. Uh, Somebody make a meme. Hashtag yeah. Netflix mafia. Somebody yeah. make a meme. Netflix Netflix mafia. We're going to get in trouble. Netflix is going to call me. No, dude, no. We, we like Netflix. No, we like Come you, on, Netflix. We're gonna make I watch all your shows. Let's make the mic think. Did you guys see The Punisher yet? No, I watched. Oh my god! It's I one watched of the, best the first shows I've seen. Twenty minutes of the first episode, all of That's it. it. I I went binge all the way through. I'm it's done. that good. It's so good. 
Wow. One of the, one of the best so it's the guy seen. from The Walking Dead. Yeah. He's a great actor. Really? I mean, it's uh, it's not for everybody. I used to read the comic brutal, book. You know, but like I've been waiting for them to depict Punisher correctly. And he is he just plays it fantastic. That's oh, true, because yeah, the Punisher yeah. is like You didn't like the movies, Punisher they did? Not really. Oh really? It's just that it wasn't it didn't have the depth. Did you read the, the comic books? Yeah. See the Punisher like in the, the comic war books. Journals and all that. Yeah, yeah, the Punisher in the comic books is he's not really a good guy. He's, no. He's a he's an anti hero. Well, I don't think yeah. that yeah, I don't think they depict him that way in the movie. In well, the movie uh, they the make movie, him yeah. You kinda root for him. Yeah. It just what it just didn't have that that impactful of a story that you'll see the difference when okay. you watch the okay. series okay. It, it is it's basically like how many episodes like 13 or something but like each one is its own movie it's like it's epic dude you know what though too the the the, the other thing too is it's very difficult in a movie to develop a character as much as you can in a series it, this is the new format dude it's crazy like you literally are watching a 13 hour movie yeah exactly yeah. it's amazing no. exactly no yeah. it is. that's why netflix didn't take over dude <laughs> it's fucking happening yeah after right after all the other celebrities get taken down heard it on mind pump first yeah <laughs> <laughs> we predict netflix will be powerful i'm sure oh, wait it's already just there. Get, uh, i'm sure testosterone testosterone nation's going to fucking write about, yeah teen nation's gonna write about this <laughs> stop <laughs> those are our boys what's the name rights for them i know I yeah know. our buddy yeah anyway so also i wanted to uh let you guys know i went i haven't you know i haven't worked out in club sport for a long time right i work out in my garage mm-hmm. yeah well, as you can tell, I have this cold, so I went there this morning because I'm like, I want to use a steam room. They, I guess they redid the steam room in the bathroom, which is it's really nice. So I did my little workout, and then I went to the steam room to try and, like, just to help my whole situation. And uh, I go, I open the door, and uh guess he was sitting in the fucking steam room. Oh, no way. Yes. That same dude? My Asian adversary. Oh, yeah. wow. Yes. Old- was it immediate, like, like, like a rustling, like a... You know, like, like, like a tumbleweed yeah. just kind of yeah. went between Woo. you guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Woo. 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 A little, yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. So I open the door. He's sitting in the corner naked on his towel. Of course. And uh, he looks at me and he goes, huh. <laughs> <laughs> like not even a word. That's just, it. Just huh. That's yeah. all he did. Huh. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, motherfucker. So I sit down next to him. I'm like, so did hey, you nod or huh? anything? I'm at like, least to acknowledge I'm it? like, how you, you Tell been? me you, you're nervous though because you haven't been doing steam in a while, right? So yeah. you're a little nervous. I now. haven't done anything in a he, while. He, he might out bake you. Yeah. So I sit next to him and I'm like, because, you know, because I kind of, I'm like, you know, fuck you, man. I got a cold. I'm going to give it to him because he's old. He's going to die anyway. I'm going to give him He's going to catch my cold <laughs> and he's going to get sick and What's then I'm going to go you? and I'm going to beat him. <clears throat> it's just tactics. So sure. I sat next to him and I'm like, weaken his immune system. Yeah. So I'm quiet because it's kind of awkward, you know? So I'm just kind of sitting there and, yeah, steam room conversation is weird to me. It is. I'm thinking to myself, like, I want to say something to him, but like, what? Do I, it almost reminds me of when you're trying to talk to a girl when you're like 13, mm, yeah. and you're trying to think of what to say. When all you got to do is go say hi. The, right? the weather, huh? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, what yeah. do I, what do I say to him? What do I say to him? So before I say anything, he's like, so you take a break, huh? And I'm like, oh yeah, I got. I've uh, been working out in my uh, in my garage. He goes, yeah. He's just sitting there. He's like, yeah, you shouldn't take a break. I'm like, oh, motherfucker. He just talks shit to <laughs> I me. I never take breaks. Yeah, you shouldn't take a break. And that's yeah. it. He's quiet and just sitting there. And I'm like, well, you know what? Fuck you, man. So I leave. So, <laughs> but because I stand close, so close to him, I'm thinking, you know, again, he's old, weak in immune system. I have a cold. Yeah. He's going to catch it. Then he's going to get a pneumonia. Then he's going to be in the steam room. <laughs> then I'm going to go in there and I'm going to beat him. I see. So I'm waiting because I feel like, I think what's So the, you didn't even try and fuck with it this time. You should have no. said, have you yeah. even gone in the cold yet? You know, you should you should pull him in that direction yeah. and see how he does. No, I don't want, see, I'm afraid because I feel like he'll beat me at anything. <laughs> so I think the incubation period for the cold is something like a week, right, Doug? Is that what it is? It's like a week or something like that, right? So I'm going to go back again. Do you like, in about as you're days. walking out, you give him a little like, <laughs> <laughs> excuse me. No, I, I blew my nose in my towel and put it right on his leg. <laughs> <laughs> rested it on his wrinkly Just leave leg. a little bit of a yeah. culture uh, there. He sounds kind of like an Asian Paul Jack. Mm. He, you know, there's something, he may be, he mm. could be. Yeah. I feel like he knows Kung Fu. Not because <laughs> wow. it's not racist. A little bit. It's not racist. Yeah, it's a little bit. Because he has that. <laughs> it's definitely a little bit. I feel like not, he dude. totally high me in the face. <laughs> no, dude. It's because he has that presence. <laughs> He has that presence. Like he's like, Daniel like, son. Like yeah. David Carradine? Yeah. No, he wasn't real, dude. Did you ever watch? David Carradine wasn't real? What do you, you mean he wasn't never, real? He's not a real kung fu guy, uh, dude. Yeah, remember remember his, remember all his slow motion karate? Hella slow. <laughs> it was so uh, great. I loved kung fu, but come on, dude. <laughs> I Steven loved, Seagal was a Bruce, little more Bruce Lee would have beat his ass. Yeah, right? yeah. I, I watched, the, when I was a kid, I watched the, uh, like the old kung fu movies that were all dubbed in English, and oh, they were the terrible. Best. 
but they were made in China and they well, were you make your own words. And they were badasses. Yeah. And there was that there would always be that one old Asian with dude with the really long, long like f- Billy yeah, like long beard, beard or whatever, yeah. and the, the bun. You know, you know who did a good yes. job depicting him was uh, uh, Kill Bill. Yeah, you know, like those characters. Yeah, I feel like that's the guy in the, in the steamer. Ah, okay, like he's got that kind of presence. Wow, you know it's what I mean? like wisdom and, and yeah, and like my fierceness. Like I'll throw a punch and then he'll be behind me. All of a sudden, I'm like, oh shit! Yeah. <laughs> you can one inch punch the shit out of you. Yeah, fuck that. Yeah. Anyway, so he'll be sick soon. Oh, oh, I wonder if he listens to the podcast. I That'd think, be cool, huh? Yeah. You think he's a, yeah, but he does. We're creating him into this legendary, it's rare mythical we, character. I mean, we met, I thought we met our oldest, I wish I remember their names. Shout out to these guys if they're still listening. When we were at Paleo FX, they, and they were like in their 70s, 70s or 80s. I think they, they were- They weren't 70. No, we met somebody, we met somebody that was in their 70s. Oh, the couple. Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. She's the one that was talking about when we were, we had some discussion about masturbation, and she started talking to me about yes, it. And yes. I was like, oh. <laughs> this is real life, you know. Like we, on the podcast is one thing. Seventy year old, that was right. They were the I 70s. loved it though. Yeah. I was like, I love you, lady. Yeah, I, I don't. We don't have that many people that are that are older than probably 50, 60 ish that listen to us. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, internet, it's all internet stuff. Yeah. Mm. They don't. They don't know how to do it. Mm. I guess <laughs> they don't know how to do it. <laughs> too complicated. Except my grandma. Okay, I'm just learning. Email. My grandma knows how to do it. My 80 year old Sicilian grandma who's never had a wow. driver's license. My, yeah. She's never driven in her life because she just doesn't. She, I mean, she's old school. So in fact, I posted a picture of her in the forum with me and my cousins because she was with her. And uh, she's on Facebook all the time, dude. Wow. She's, she's always commenting on my pictures or she'll send an emoji. Dude, that's what I thought. I'm like, about how did my you grandma? do that? She's 95, but I found out it was my aunt posting as her. I'm like, that's <laughs> cheating. <laughs> like, come on. I thought grandma was like super hip there for a second. No, my grandma will literally post stuff and like pictures and she'll send me emojis and. Like a picture of a road. Really? Yeah, dude. She'll comment on. Do stuff. you guys remember the when your when your parents made the transition to finally texting? Oh, like my oh, God. and do you remember how how rough that was to for that transition? No, no, no. Worse than that is the emoji. <laughs> your parents use emojis. Yeah. Ew. <laughs> don't do that. I don't want like a weird winky face for my dad. <laughs> So, no, your dad. <laughs> yeah, bro. And then he sends you the purple pepper. I just told him, I was like, "Don't do that again." <laughs> said, I just told him, "Don't do that again." Your dad's like, yeah. "Hey, make He's it like, s- what's this one? I'm making your- eggplant tonight. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I don't want to come over. <laughs> no, thank you." Uh, so what's even weirder is I text with my kids because they have phones. They don't have service, but they work through the Wi-Fi. because yeah. they'll play games and stuff, and it's got the iMessage. So my kids will text me, and my eight-year-old daughter. I, I don't know how she learned how to text so well. She knows how to use emojis, and and she uses, like, uh, what is it called when you only use, like, two or three letters that mean something? Abbreviations. Oh, and yeah. I'm like, look at this little shit. Like, really good stuff. Yeah. L-E-T-M-F-O. Oh, and then, yeah. And my daughter will be like, uh, WTF. She's like, what, WTF. I'm like, excuse me? <laughs> Do you know what that stands for? She's like, no. I'm like, okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> my eight-year-old daughter, what the fuck, dad? WTF, dad. What the yeah. fuck? What the fuck? Oh, God. All All right, right. Doug, bring on the bird. Yikes. This quaz brought to you by Organifi. For those days you fall short on getting your organic veggies or whole food nutrition, Organifi fills the gap with laboratory-tested certified organic superfoods to help give your health and performance the added edge. Try Organifi totally risk-free for 60 days by going to Organifi.com. That's O-R-G-A-N-I-F-I.com. And use the coupon code MINDPUMP for 20% off at checkout. All right, our first question is from Kyla Gross. After listening to the show, I consciously try to not consume sucralose in my diet as I have a sensitive gut to begin with. I consume Dimatize ISO 100 daily and have always felt fine until recently when my stomach would be in extreme discomfort about 10 minutes after consuming. I looked at the label and realized it has sucralose like many proteins do. Is it possible that suddenly my gut is rejecting this despite it being fine previously. I've tried some vegan proteins and they taste like literal dirt. Help. So before I try to explain or or figure out what's happening to her, um, I will do a little plug here for Organifi. I've I've been taking vegan proteins for... Uh, maybe ten years, and let me mm-hmm. tell you, for the most they, part, they suck. They, it's true, yeah, yeah it's all true. Of them. There's some hemp ones out there, but yeah, no, 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 it's true. Most of them taste whey, just tastes good. It mixes really good, especially if you get yeah. the artificially yeah, fl- yeah, flavored better. ones. They yeah. taste good. Organifi's uh, protein is legit 
tasty, especially chocolate. No, man. Chocolate literally tastes good. Oh, I like the vanilla. I mean, I think I think out of all vegan proteins I've ever messed with, it's by far the best. It's They're one of the best based. ones because I used to do raw protein from Garden of Life, and mm -hmm. it was okay, but it always had that. Uh, like, like you know, vegan proteins tend to have this like uh, not chalky, but almost like you can taste the powder. And they always have a weird aftertaste. Yeah. Um, the Organifi one doesn't. It actually is comparable to a whey protein. So that being said, there's a couple points I want to make with this question. <clears throat> First off, we need to understand something about our, our bodies. When you figure out what works for your body, whether it come, whether it's your diet or your workout or supplements or whatever, <clears throat> you need to understand that that's what's working for your body right now. Your body does it changes all the time it is not a right. it is not some you know stationary thing that once you figure it out now that's the answer and it's always going to be the answer that's never how it works your body's changing because of outward you know uh, outside you know pressures or you know lack of sleep or your job stress. or stress what's that statistic is it every 7 years 7 like, years yeah you, you completely, completely turn every all new cell. cells every yeah, cell every cell but even besides that oh, yeah. like my body can change from today versus yesterday depending mm -hmm. on the circumstances of my day. Right. Um, so although something may always have worked for you, that doesn't mean it's going to continue to always work for you because I'll, I'll get this all the time where people, it's almost like cognitive dissonance where they'll be like, well, I, you know, chicken can't possibly cause this bloat. I've always eaten chicken. Yeah. And they'll hard-headedly continue to they eat. They strung it together. Yeah, they'll keep doing it. I've been guilty of this. Yeah. Right. You know, I know lots of people have been guilty. So your body changes so yes, although you've been having it um, and it never bothered you before, that doesn't mean it's not going to bother you in the future. The second thing is this is a classic symptom of uh, leaky gut syndrome. It doesn't mean you have it. It's just one of the classic symptoms. And one of the classic symptoms is when you're consuming something that you've always consumed and all of a sudden you have you know, gut issues as a result of consuming that thing. The reason why it's a classic symptom, and I'm going to just do a real quick description of leaky gut. When you have any kind of inflammation in your gut uh, or dysbiosis, meaning the bacteria is kind of thrown off, which sucralose will do. We can talk about that too. When you have that going on, your gut becomes what, what, uh, what they'll say in, in Western medicine, hyperpermeable, meaning that whatever, you know, your gut allows things to travel through and get absorbed in your body. And it's a very intricate process. Not only what it allows to go through, but when it allows it to go through because there's certain nutrients that need to be absorbed at certain times in the process of digestion. The stomach absorbs certain things. The upper intestines absorb certain things, the lower intestines. And it just it's a very intricate process. So when you have inflammation in your gut, things are moving through the gut wall when they're not supposed to or things that are never supposed to go through. And what your body does when things go through the gut wall is it considers these things, many times it considers them to be foreign invaders. It looks at it as an insult and it develops antibodies. It develops an, uh, an immune reaction to these, these particles. So if I'm taking whey protein all the time and I have low levels of gut inflammation, but over time, some of these larger whey protein molecules pass through my, my gut wall when they're not supposed to, and my body starts to recognize whey protein as a foreign invader, invader. it develops antibodies, and now whey protein bothers me. Now I can't have whey protein anymore because my body, as soon as I eat it, my body says, and oh a, shit. And so a, pretty, a pretty common rule is that this is stuff that you typically did eat a ton of. It rarely, you, That's usually I, how it happens. It's rarely somebody who's like, oh, I found a new food, my stomach's all fucked up from it. No, it's yeah. it's normally something that Friendly we- Friendly fire. You know, honestly, if we're, if we're being completely honest with ourselves, we're, we probably abused a little bit. You know, it's something that, and and a lot of that has to do too with the, the oversaturating and overconsumption too, right? Like sure. if you were in a deficit, if we lived, you know, sixty percent of the time in a deficit, or even half the time in a deficit, you'd probably be okay. But it's because the way we eat as Americans is we overconsume, overconsume, and then we're eating all this st the same things over and over and over, and then that's what ends up happening is the shit you ate all the time. Now your stomach's fucked so up. So when you go to actually test whether or not you have a leaky gut or like symptoms of a leaky gut like how do you i know that like certain functional medicine practitioners like they have like certain tests you can do is that yeah. the pinner test or what <clears throat> yeah so so the pinner test is a test that you can take that and unfortunately it's not foolproof 
but it it can point you in the right direction and give you more information than just you know guessing. And what a pinner test does is it tests for IgG antibodies. Now IgE antibodies, and I really hope I'm getting this correct. Maybe you can you can fact check me, Doug, so I don't uh, I'm not wrong Fuck here. Fuck it up. But IgE antibodies are the kind of antibodies that cause food allergies. Now, if you had a food allergy, you would know because you'd have an immediate allergic reaction that causes things like anaphylactic shock and swelling and you know hives and stuff like that. And people know when they have an allergy. Now, an intolerance is a little different because IgG antibodies don't cause those allergic reactions, but it is a systemic immune response. It's more subtle. It can cause things like skin issues. It can cause inflammation in the joints. It can cause uh, lots of different uh, issues. Let me see. Yep, I'm right. Perfect. So <laughs> he doubted himself for a minute. There. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> yep, right. Moving yep. on. Thanks, yep. Doug. <laughs> Appreciate it. <laughs> Still smart. Yeah. yeah. Yes, so, I am. So yeah. anyway, uh, so what the Pinner test does is it tests for IgG antibodies, and they'll test you for like a bunch of different foods, and then it'll show you, you know how, uh, you know how all those foods rank, you know high, moderate to low, and basically what they'll say is okay, avoid all the foods that are in the high category. The pinner testers are like 400 bucks. I did one a long time ago. It's what helped me initially. But really the gold standard is the hard way, which is an elimination diet. Right. That's it. An elimination, yep. elimination diet can take three months because yep. you got to cut something out of your diet for a month or two months, get everything to calm down, then reintroduce it one at a time. It's a pain in the ass, but it's really the best uh, it's the best way uh, to it's do the it. Best long term strategy. Yeah. So I would start with a pinner test and then try the elimination uh, afterwards. But definitely, <clears throat> sucralose can exacerbate or cause some of these problems because sucralose uh, in in studies will show it destroys something something like half up to half of the beneficial bacteria in the gut when you consume it. And if you start fucking with the the microbiome of the gut like that, you can you can you can expect to have gut inflammation. And the funny thing is this, this is a perfect storm because protein powders, when do people normally consume protein powders? Yeah, right? after, after workout. Right? After workout and all the inflammation. That's it. Yikes. And a workout, especially a really hard workout, it causes inflammation everywhere, including in the gut. So now you already have this, the context of uh, inflammation. Now you're drinking a protein it's drink. Like gasoline on the fire. It's huh? got sucralose in it, which is going to add more problems. So you have an inflamed gut from the exercise. You have sucralose, which is fucking with your gut microbiome, and you're introducing a protein, uh, you know, protein molecules into your gut. You're likely to develop. Oh, and then top it off, issues. A lot of these fucking people end up getting addicted to the pre workouts and the shakes and doing that. And then they're, and whether it be a real addiction to it or a behavioral addiction to it, they're addicted to it and they're doing it every single time. And I was, I was a kid just like yep. this, man. Yeah. I, I fucking know. So, and so were all of my buddies, all of my trainer friends. We all were the same way. It was like shake, it's the culture, pre workout, shake, culture. bar. Yeah. yeah. Three times a day, every day. You know, no wonder I'm all fucked up now. That's right. Like, no and, wonder. And, uh, uh, and it, this has actually been looked at, where they they see that a higher a higher percentage of hard training athletes have gut or, or diagnosed with gut issues than the average person. Just because when you train hard, you're, you're always pushing your body towards that edge of inflammation. And I would suspect that athletes just they're the they're the market when it comes to all these you know artificial supplements. So right, right. so yeah, I would say avoid not only avoid sucralose, but stop taking. Uh, Milk protein uh, proteins, so no more whey protein, no more casein. Um, go to the, the the vegan ones if you want to still take protein, and use ones that are not flavored artificially. Um, and of course, we're sponsored by Organifi, but legit, that's the one I'd recommend anyway. All right. Oh, hey, before you next side note on this, I have been getting a bunch of uh, DMs, <laughs> and I saw one of the quas or uh, questions that we had on the IG also was people asking us about what our our favorite Thrive product is now. Mm. What do you think about uh, sending Fry? Let's put them on the spot and send them. See if we can get like a you know a mind pump like our favorite, like a basket or a box that we put together that it's like the mind pump basket. Yeah, yeah. So people oh that are like God. wanting because like, I've had a lot of people that are like interested, like oh I want to try this or what do you think? And they're all asking me about all these things that we've got. So we put together Ooh. like a bro. You know, we could even call it the mind pump sampler. Yeah, that's what I mean. And change it 
every right. month. Right. Hey, this month Mind Pump Sampler includes. Let's put the yeah. pressure on Thrive to get that done for us because I think the I think our audience would. You totally know, what I love it. the cricket chips, dude. Those are bomb. I told every. See, everyone asked me. I, I got a bunch of because I did the Insta story on those. Oh yeah. Me and too. so everybody was they were asked. Fucking good. Everyone was asked, I said, yeah. well, you know, Sal and Justin loved them. I was like, kind of, I because it's crunchy. Yeah. That's fucks Is it with the me. psychological oh, part. Yes, you know I eat the <laughs> I eat the cricket protein bars and the and the shake powder, no problem. But the crunchy, the, crunch. the crunchy chip, <laughs> and looking at See, the, I cr- enjoyed that because there's this weird primal part of me. I'm like, oh, fuck you're, you, uh, <laughs> you know, like I'm yo. eating a living being. Yeah. Whoa, <laughs> <laughs> that's if they made baby seal jerky, he'd eat that too. Yeah, 100. Uh, you know what'll put pressure on Thrive, Doug? If you don't take this part out and air it. Oh, we are gonna. It's leave going. It oh, okay. Oh yeah. yeah. All right. And cool. the email's already gone out to Thrive for the. Mind pump sampler. Oh, oh. So yeah. We'll see, we'll oh, see wow. how they respond. Cool. Interesting. Yeah, boy, Doug. Our next question is from our same person from the last question, Kyla Gross. Ooh, how a can twofer. you? Yes, indeed. How can you tell when you're you are listening to your body versus making excuses for yourself? <laughs> <laughs> That's a great question. Oh man. Yeah. 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 I'm the... so intuitive right now. <laughs> yeah, my the... body's telling me I want yeah. this. Uh, oh god. So here's the rest of the question. I love training and often struggle with knowing if I'm being in tune with my body's needs or just making excuses to take a break from training. I train six days a week and love the hustle and feel guilty when I take more than one oh, day off. Oh, there's your signs. Yeah. There's, there's, there's your signs right there. This is a big, This is a good question because- It is a good question. And I love the, I love the transparency. It's too. honesty. Yeah, is listening to yeah. Listening versus making excuses. It, re- it reminds me of my mom when I was a kid, used to how she used to, uh, you know, every, anything that like happened bad or whatever in our lives, it was like, you know, well, God told me. Yeah. You know, God told me this, so it was yeah. like it was like it was like fuck, dude. God's so confused. Why does he go this way? Then he goes that way. It's, it's like no, just admit selfishly that's what you want to fucking do. Oh, what? oh, really? And you're convincing you. Oh, yeah, yeah. Same thing. It's the same thing, right? Oh, Except yeah. it's, I've it's, heard it, that my right. Whole life. Instead of instead of it being God, now it's intuitive. You know, intuitive eating that's yourself. That's telling your body's telling you that, you're, dude. And I, you know, like, no, you're being lazy. Whoa. You're not going to the gym. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> See, I thought this would be a good question for you, Adam, because uh, you and I have talked about this many times, and uh, I've been getting shit tons of messages from people who are like well I, I, I listen to my body but my body tells me to eat donuts all day and not do anything and you know how do I and yeah. uh, you know it's, it is a hard question to answer almost you know what I like to say to people is you know if, if you think you're, you're fooling yourself you are Yeah. I mean you have to just be honest with yourself I, it's, it's hard it's so hard to be radically honest with yourself isn't it because we don't want to we want to lie to ourselves we want to mm-hmm. not be you know to be true and i'll tell you something right now if you just let go of that fear and just go through it and just are radically honest with yourself it's actually awesome yeah. you know it's just you it's you and you there's no well, one else it's around. a controlling mechanism you know that we all have and, and we want to override signals and, and, and interpret it in a different way but I mean, have you really even given in to like what your body's telling you? Oh, I, I, I think that there's, uh, and this is a thing that you and I get into on this show all the time is the, you know, there's so many levels and layers to this for someone to get. Like yeah. when you like, and I ultimately, it I, is Jedi stuff, right? I mean, ultimately, I mean, I, I how many styles have you met? How many, yeah. how many, how many other guys? Zero. In, <laughs> and, I, and we've been in the fitness profession yeah. for, you know what I'm saying? So I, when I talk to people, I'm like, listen. I know everyone loves to hear Sal talk about that, and everybody wants to be on that same level, and we want him for president and all that shit like that. <laughs> <laughs> He's so bitter. <laughs> but listen, I remember mo- that listen, one. motherfuckers. <laughs> this guy's put some work in for a very, very long time, uh, and it and it takes time. And so there's steps to this, right? So for me, I think you have to first, first you have to be consistent about something because yeah, if you're not totally consistently following something, whether it be fucking the elimination diet, a pay, I don't give a fuck. If you're not consistent, like yeah. your signals are so off and like the you slightest to teach yourself first, you, you don't know yeah. what your body's sending you because you're not being consistent with anything. So that's the first and foremost is just learn to be consistent about whatever your plan is. So let's say your plan is elimination diet and you're going to follow that or payload diet. You're going to follow that for a while, then do that and stick to it. And then, and pay, and just at the very beginning, all you're doing is monitoring. You're not saying, "Oh, did that make me feel this way every day?" No, you're just like being consistent for a while. Let your like let your body mm-hmm. get acclimated to being consistent with the nutrition and the training program you're doing. And then what you do is you start to 
ch- test things. Yeah. So I allow something into my diet that I, I might be that I think that could potentially be it's a very it. scientific way of uh, approaching that right. for sure. And you and you and you don't just do it once. Yeah. You do it once. You pay attention to it. You do it again. Maybe you do it two or three times. So this is what I mean. Like Sal's got a chance to do this over the course of his twenty plus years. I've had the opportunity to do this over the last fifteen plus years. So it takes time to get to this level. Yeah, and you could you could easily trick yourself, fool yourself into to thinking yes. that's the right thing for you at the time. Because I did for years. Yeah, exactly. For year, if you asked me ten years ago how aware I am of my diet, my body, I would tell you I was fucking on point with all that. Mm-hmm. You know, because I I know I'm a trainer, I'm smart, I understand nutrition. Like, and that's just it. That's just it. Like that's what that's literally what this awareness is. Is you're it, unaware when you're unaware of something, you're not even aware that you're unaware of it. It's 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 not even something you think about. Like the example you gave, like if you asked me certain questions ten years ago, I'd be very I'd be positive. I'd be so sure right. that I knew certain things because I was so unaware of certain things that I wasn't even aware that they existed. And so that's one thing that I want to make a point of with to, to kind of point across with this is that this is not it's not a destination. Mm-mm. It's not a place that you get to and you're like, I'm here. Well, no, because it's a process. But you've already said it. That the gut, it's always changing. We're different every That's seven it. years. So it's like what was working for you five years ago may not be working for you. And yeah. and, and, and and more often than not, it's connected to probably some of the bad habits yep. or choices that you made along that way. And except, just- except the following. Except, uh, this is truth, nobody will ever fool you better than you will. <laughs> Period. Nobody can fool me like I can fool me. I can fool me so fucking good <laughs> that I will buy into that shit and become it. And then it's only later good. on. Feel, right? It's only later on that I'm like, oh shit, I was I fooled myself so much. Yeah. We do this with relationships, we do this with our jobs, we do this with our diet and our training. So knowing that You're closing yourself that's you say that. all the yeah. time. You're just man. closing yourself Come right on, now, man. dude. How long let me ask you this. Yeah, how, that was a good idea. How long did you stay working in corporate fitness, for example, right? Or how long did I do certain things? And I did way too I look back and I think, you know, and I always look back and say, Okay, I understand. I got this out of it and that out of it. But I fooled myself for the last, you know, five years of doing it. Right. right. Where I thought this is what I'm supposed you know, this is what I want to do and this is what I like. When in reality, I was just I didn't like it. I didn't right, want to do it anymore. Right, right. Yeah. So it's a process that is it's constantly evolving. Knowing that is what's going to guide you. If you think of this as a destination, like oh, you know what? I'm going to be so intuitive with my diet in a year from now. No, you're not. You're not. You're going to be. You'll be more aware than you are today. Mm. But you're, there isn't a place that you're ever going to hit where you're this. You know, God of <clears throat> of your of knowing things. I mean, I guess that's called enlightenment, but I, I've never met anybody that was enlightened like that. So, think of it as a process. It's a constant thing that you work on. But at the same time, I also want to be clear: don't identify with the working on it either, because that can also become its own thing. Where you're this. I met this. I'll tell you what. Years ago, there was this lady that came uh, to my gym, and uh, she wanted to hire me to train her. <clears throat> and we sat down. And we started talking about, uh, you know, wellness. And this was, I was getting, I was at this point, I was kind of getting deep into like the wellness side of it. So I wasn't really the meathead trainer anymore. I wasn't as aware as I am now, but I was getting into it. So we had a great conversation, but she was like, oh, I, I can only wear clothes that are made like this, certain dyes. I can't this certain perfumes. I can't. And she's like, I have to walk this way. I have to be this way. And her life was consumed. Right with this super hyper trying to be aware of every little thing to where it became this uh, obsession of hers and it made her very unhealthy. She was this very anxious, unhealthy Mm -hmm. individual. And I would see her, she ended up not hiring me because about halfway through my presentation with her, I decided I don't want this lady to hire me. So I don't know if you ever, you guys have ever done that. Yeah, where yeah, halfway totally. through you start, you're like, to be, you're, you're like <laughs> well, you finish the hour up, you're like, me. oh, you try to just give her information and wait for her. Yeah. And she's like, well, what, what is your? Tra- oh, I just I don't have any time. Yeah. Like, you know? yeah. Oh no, no, it's, it's like halfway through I start to become a bad salesman. Like, oh shit, I don't want uh, her to try and hire me. So I walk around. <laughs> I'm I way mean, overpriced. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I, yeah. So I'm walking around. Uh, I'd walk around town because I used to go on walks <laughs> and stuff, and I'd see this lady, and she was fucking miserable. She was always always miserable. And I remember looking at her thinking, man, I don't ever want to be, because I could have a tendency, right? I could push myself to that point where I become consumed with all this. So that's the other part. So it is a process. And part of your, part of this process is 
realizing that you're not listening to your body sometimes. Sometimes it means you're doing shit that whatever, you're not supposed to, whatever. Be okay with it. Don't judge it. It's part of the whole process. It's called being alive. It's life. Right. And it's fucking fun. The process is really, really fun. Well, and recognize when it's not working for you. Too. Well, you also, know, like after you make the mistake, you know, acknowledge yeah. it and then just move forward and don't like hold yourself, like hang on it. I also want to point out too that, you know, the last sentence that she says about <clears throat> six days a week and loving the hustle and feel guilty when I want to take more than one day off. Like that's not you listening to your body. That's, like, right. that's you fucking with your head. Like you're, you're already not allowing yourself to listen to your body because you're, you're feeling guilty over mm. not working you out. You shouldn't feel guilt. No. Who are you yeah. feeling? Like here's a guilt. Who is, are you letting down? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh-huh. Thank you. Who are you letting down? I'm letting myself down. Who is that person? Like, who is this person you're identifying with? So, <laughs> but it's benefiting you. Yeah. yeah, that's a great point. Right. But what you said, Adam, was uh, I couldn't have said it better. You know, part of the process, the beginning part of the process, a long part of the process is tracking, knowing what's in food, counting macros, being consistent with your workouts. You know, I tell you one thing that we recommend with our maps programs. People will tell us all the time, like. You know, I want to uh, I want to individualize this for my body, and we'll always say the same thing. Go through it exactly as we laid it out the first time. Right, just the first time. Just be consistent with how we did it, because we're we're good trainers. We know what we're doing. After you've done it, then start to individualize it, because then you'll have a good idea, or at least a better idea, right. of what your body needs. Right. So yeah, definitely start consistently. Follow some plan. Start to pay attention, and then start to work through the process. Next question is from R Strength Shelton. Have you ever injured a client or had a client injured on your watch? <laughs> what was the outcome and what were the reactions on both oh, sides? First throw us all under the bus again. First here. one that comes to mind right away. I trained this lady, uh, Mindy Doe. Never forget her. She's a badass. So uh shout out to Mindy if she listens to the show. She uh I trained her five days a week and she was like fit, badass, and we were we were doing dumbbell chest press and, you know, I think she was, I think it was only 15s, 10 or 15s. You know, I was, I think she was, I had her super setting something and then going over and then doing dumbbell flies or whatever. And I pinched the dumbbells to grab them, you know, like, oh, you know, no. cause they're, they're holding the handles. Right. And when I used to train like some of my ladies that and they're were, light you and just, they're light, I could just pick them with my fingers yeah. oh. and my hands were kind of slippery and, oh, no. and wet and, oh, man. and I, and I pinched it and oh, one no. of them fucking drops and bounces off her, her fucking face. head, bounced off her head, dude. Oh no. Oh my God. Ouch. Yeah. Yeah. And it, you could tell it really hurt. I mean, thank God I had a great relationship already with her. She'd yes. been a client of <laughs> mine for a long time. She didn't so, sue you. <laughs> yeah. So she didn't sue me. She didn't fucking make me feel, I mean, I felt like shit right afterwards cause yeah. she, I mean, big old wealth on her head and goose egg fucking. Oh pfft, my God. Oh, Oh, oh yeah, that no. bad. oh yeah, it was that bad. Goose egg popped up within about two minutes, dude. It was oh, yeah, it was. Oh, man. So that that that's the first one that comes to mind. I don't know if I've ever. I had somebody pass out on me. That was <laughs> what? That yeah, would scare that me. That was not fun. That would scare yeah, me. Like I, this is like why real, real early because it was like a hot it. day outside. Yeah, and my go to <laughs> when I first started, right? I'm a, I was ex athlete, like. Yeah, like everybody loved my hard workouts, you know. I got a lot of pride in that, and um, so this this poor girl, um, she loved the workouts like leading up to that, and we were just doing like kind of the same intensity, same pace. But I had didn't ha- take into account she was didn't get any sleep, you know, the night before. She was telling me all this later, like she was on some kind of a medication she didn't tell me about, and she didn't take it. It's like the perfect storm. It's the perfect storm, and like. Um, so she was just going through this sort of a circuit that I was doing at the time and finished it. And we're, we're kind of like going back to sign off and she's kind of walking a little bit behind me, a little slowly, a little bit behind me, like thinking back, like I probably would have caught it a lot earlier cause I saw her eyes kind of glazed over, you know, that look. Oh, you know, like seven mile stare. I got really good at, at catching that. <laughs> Ever look. since yeah. then, I did. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I had to go through the hard <laughs> process of being an asshole. That's when you learned that. Oh, it was, it was horrible. So I was she like, just hit the, hit the so deck? So she, she kept walking slow, and I, I realized, like, hey, where, where'd you go? She was against the wall, like, like leaned against the wall, then all of a sudden, psh, lights out and, like, slid down, and then we had to call ambulance and everything, and, and she came to, and she was fine. Did you have to CPR her at all? Did you no, no, no. <laughs> she just passed out. Yeah, she just passed out. I bet you felt. I felt you like. shit your pants first off. Dude. Oh, as a trainer, asshole. you got to shit your pants. I was so scared. That's one of the, I, easily one of the scariest things that 
will ever happen to you as a personal trainer Ugh. is if you your your client gets hurt or passes out or something yeah. like that while you're training. You no, know, because I, I was like, I'm so safe. You, you know, see your career yeah. like the, just the irony for me. The the same thing except for mine. My client it was same client. Actually, I was pushing her on legs. And but she got lightheaded and dizzy, and she just had to sit down. And then she laid down, and then we didn't do anything for the rest of the workout. So yeah. she was fucked up for sure. But that was the fir- that was what my like. Once I saw that, that I did that to her, I was like, that scared me enough that I never, I never hurt somebody. That was it. it. Sucks so that it was, comes to that. But yeah, that poor lady got two things yeah. happened to her from me. Yeah. It was early on in my oh, career, no, and then girl. that set the tone later on. I never uh, hurt. I never injured anybody. I never hurt yeah, anybody. Never yeah, I, I got really my, my main one. I got really really good at. There's a look that, and I know you guys can, can have seen it, and trainers who've been doing training for a long time have seen it. There's a look, and there's subtle symptoms that you can see, where you know if we do more, you're gonna throw up. Yeah, yeah. Like it's not. But I didn't know that early on, yeah. so I'd push people, and then they go to the bathroom and whatever. But I could see it after. So later on, I'd be training people, and then they'd be like, "Oh, can I take a break?" And then you can see the cold sweat, mm-hmm. and to get that kind of pale look, and then and then they'll be like, "Well, if uh, I can do more, if I just take a break," and I'm always like, shaky. "Yeah, I'm yeah. like, no, you're done. Yeah. Yeah. How, let me see. Yeah. Are your hands shaky? Yeah, we're yeah. done." And I'd get them like a fruit or something to eat. So I had a guy. Mm-hmm. The one that pops into my mind was actually, I hate to say it, kind of on purpose. Not that I hurt him. <laughs> what? Like a lesson that you're teaching him. Not that I hurt him. I didn't hurt him. Oh man. But this dude, uh, he calls me, and I think I told this story. Oh, the one there. He like just, in episode three only, or something like that. I only have 15 minutes. Yeah, or he something. calls me up, and he's like haggling with me over personal training prices over the phone. And I'm like, listen, dude, I'm like, you know, but besides haggling with me, he'd ask me questions. So this was over the course of a week. So he'd call me up. Hey, Sal, I'm thinking about hiring you still, but what do you think about carbohydrates? Or what do you think about, you know, protein intake? Or what about this exercise? So after talking for a fucking week, I finally said, listen, dude, you got to come hire me. I'm not going to just answer free questions all the time. <laughs> right, you just call Stupid. me. Stupid. <laughs> so then he'd come in, he'd hire me. So great when people And he that. was this, yeah. he was this like engineer, you know, probably in his like 45 year old dude, shorter, chubby guy, and just, just kind of a weirdo, like kind of a weirdo. He tried to be my friend and he'd say things like, hey, we should go out and like look at chicks. I remember he said that one, like, look at chicks. Like, that's a fucking <laughs> weird thing to say. Yeah. He was just a weird dude. So he came in, he would come in and he would tell me things like, yeah, I want to be able to, you know, I didn't really get sore last time. So, I, you know, I don't, I don't want you to count that as a session. Like, stuff like that. <laughs> so, he calls me up. So, he would say stuff like that to me. Like, yeah, let's not count that one. I want you to get sore. count that as so a session. So, I look at him like, and I tell him like, no, we're going to count it. It's still, it's still a workout. Yeah. So, he called me up one day and he's like, hey, listen. He goes, his appointment was supposed to be at 4 and it's like 3.05. And he says, hey, Sal, can I just come in right now because I'm, I'm available? And I said, uh, uh, sure. I said, give me one second. I text my other, another guy, another client says, yeah, I'll take the four o'clock. So I filled that spot up. So I text him back and I'm like, yeah, you can come in. And he goes, cool. He goes, but since I'll be there at about, you know, 15, 20 minutes late, can you put, can you keep me in for an hour? And I'm like, well, no, I just filled your old spot and I can't, I can't do it. And he goes, oh, I really want to get like a, a real workout in. He's like, can you just give me like a good workout then? Like a hard one. Cause the last couple were like talking shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Wow. So I'm like, all right. All right, motherfucker. So, at, so he's he's driving over. He says he's down the street. So I set up a circuit with kettlebells. <laughs> kettlebell circuits are the worst. Okay. Yeah, because you can do a lot in a confined space. Bro, I'm doing kettlebell swings and snatches and figure eights and oh, yeah. fucking like you go back to back to back to jump back to back. lunges Easy. and like yeah. all the shit that I know. Jump lunges. Yeah, like <laughs> just destroying this guy. <laughs> See, you guys know this. You guys know because oh, everyone did it. That's why. There's certain oh, exercises man. you can pick that you know will kick someone's ass. Mm-hmm. Like and jump lunges is one of them. So I, I put like seven exercises together, and he runs in. And he's like, I got to change my clothes real quick. So I'm like, no problem, buddy. He comes mm. out and I ha- put him through this fucking insane circuit. And he tries to stop a couple times. And I'm like, don't stop. Keep going. So I'm like, I'm going to give him the real experience that he thinks he wants. So after about 15 minutes of it, he, he has this look on his face and he fucking stumbles over. And I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> he's going to throw up. Yeah. So I grab the garbage. I bring it over. And, and he's just fucking puking his ass off. And then he sits down. And I'm still relentless. I don't know why I was such an asshole that day. I'm still relentless. <laughs> you really got under your skin. Oh, big time. So as he's sitting there, I'm like, all right, man. I'm like, let me know when you're ready to keep going. <laughs> let me know when you're ready. Anyway, he never came back. <laughs> so that was it. That was that guy. Yeah. Uh, then I had uh, another client where we were, this was a woman who came to me and wanted to just get better shape. And I had convinced her 
that we need to lift weights, like lifting weights, like actual barbell exercises, which we all know is true, is one of the most effective things you can do, speed up the metabolism, build muscle, all that stuff. One of the reasons why she didn't want to lift weights is because she was afraid of getting injured. Like, I don't want to get hurt. And I'm like, listen, you know, there's always that risk, but I'm a good trainer. I know what I'm doing. Fucking first set of deadlifts with just the bar up on the rack pulls her back. Oh, God. Son of the a- first first set, dude. Oh, no. After she said that to After you? she said that. Oh, God. Pulls her back. I, we, she, she lays down on the ground. I do some stretches with her. I do this and that. I go in the back. Thank God I have a good massage therapist. I tell the therapist, I'm going to buy her a massage right now. <laughs> Could you help her out? Yeah. And she helped her out. And anyway, this woman ended up becoming a long-term client of mine. But oh, wow. I was so wow, like- saved that one. Fuck. Yeah, because yeah. I bought her a massage. Yeah, like, yeah. I got you. Oh, don't worry. Get this massage. No, that's good. It's There's good a good lesson in that right there, though. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, you know you fucked up. You know that was something that like, fuck, I should have even been even closer or safer. Now we got to handle this. Right. So. And then that, okay, I'm going to add my own pocket, right? And probably didn't get paid for that session. Then in addition to that, you probably shot 100 bucks or more yeah. just to get a massage done for her. And then what does it turn out? Ends up being probably a life. Or she ended up client. staying with me for like yeah. for like seven years. Yeah, See, for like a long time. Man, and this wasn't an injury, but I feel like I could have saved this, but I just didn't know how to react because I was younger back then, and like this threw me for a curveball. You know, like this this poor lady. I think I've told this story too. She started crying. Like, like she was having a really bad day, and then oh, I was, I've had a lot of those. I was just working her out like normal, <laughs> and but like. She was like, why are you treating me so hard? No, and like, no, she like didn't. making it all about me. <laughs> you know, like all her shit that was going on, like it turned out, I was like the guy that did it all to her. You know, <laughs> like she's like crying at, like at me, like pointing at me and like all this stuff in the gym. And, and I'm just like, ah, oh, you know, somebody get me out of here. <laughs> you know, like I just like kind of went over and I tried to like be like empathetic and I kind of went over and I was like, I did the pat thing, you know, from the side, like on her back. Like I was like trying to, I was like, do I hug her? Like, like I was, it's gonna be okay, you know. And, like I just kind of patted her and she's just like, eh, and like left and like uh, she never came back. Why are you trading <laughs> so hard? Yeah, I was like, I barely even got started. Justin, <laughs> Justin was brutal. That was his. Thing. Was I was really? kind of brutal. He, he was yeah. the yeah, he was the hard was trainer. Brutal. For was, real? Oh yeah, no. If I had a, if, it, if there was a client, probably him or Ronnie, because they were competitive with each other. With it, we were. That's yeah, what that we was. That's how we it like. Was I mean, bad, dude. It was. It yeah. was. That's how all, so many trainers were, though. So many. That's trainers. why we voiced that all the time because that was like our mentality when we well, first got and started. The cl- and the clients were the same way too. Like they, yeah. that's how they would they would measure if a trainer was good or not. They like, brag about it, yes, to their friends. And, and then I, that developed across. You know how many clients I had that would come to me right as the boss and say, "Hey, you know, I really like you know so and so. She's great and everything like that. But you know, I want someone to kind of kick my ass a little more. Could you give me? Right. That was always the fuck. That was I had, always the underlying. I always had to do yeah, that, dude. Jab. I don't know how many times. Like, All right, here's Justin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, here you go. You asked for it. You know, <laughs> yeah. and then they come back like, I love him. Yeah. I love him. Yeah. It's like making yeah. a deal with yeah. the devil. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, say, it is. Yeah. Three months later, I can't move. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, oh, I still shit. made it work. You know, even though it was bad. Next question is from Healthy, Happy, and Free. Do you think it's possible for a person with an unhealthy mind to have a healthy body? Nope. Dude, people are going to think that we uh, are friends with Healthy, Happy, and Free. We answer her questions all the You know what's funny? The time. I don't even realize. Oh, I, know, huh? I don't even realize. I know. We all do the same thing. We just read it. Rolodex. We pick ones that we think are really good questions. That's and we just it. throw them hey, up. Hey, man. No everybody who... else step your game up. That's, that's the bottom line. This <laughs> yeah. is capitalism yeah, after she, all, right? She has, like, she has good questions. Competition. Ask uh, some good questions. I, I just think people should like, we don't even, we have no we have no connection to her whatsoever. No, she, she writes no, fucking good questions. Do better. You yeah. know? <laughs> just do better. Yeah, guys. stop asking. There's sometimes you get questions like She's killing you. Uh, guys. What's the best amount of protein to take for building muscle? Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> okay. well, well, give that to Justin. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love, I love this question. <laughs> so you can, no, you can't. So here, and here's why you can't. One of the biggest uh, problems and mistakes with the Western medicine mentality of health is that the 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 systems of the body, even that, even saying that is funny. The systems of the body are all independent, and the reason why we have that mentality is because the scientific method, which is uh, the best method in the world for learning things, it just really is. It it requires that you take things, separate them out, test them, isolate them. You know, you, you come up with your, your theory, you test that theory, and then it becomes, you know, truth or, or disproven. And so as a result of that, we learn lots of things about the human body, but also as a result of that, 
We think of the nervous system by itself, the endocrine system by itself, the muscular system by itself, or the body and the mind being independent. You can't separate the two. You simply can't. And, and luckily, science now proves this. If you think something in your brain, think of something happy, something sad, something scary, we can measure it in your body with the hormones that you produce, with the chemicals that are released in the body. We can see your muscle tension will change, your mood, your mindset will change, your posture, which will change muscle recruitment patterns, which will then yeah. cause pain in those areas. When it's all lined up perfectly, it like just exudes. Like you just, it, it, you feel like a totally different kind of presence from somebody that is really like, the, like truly healthy. Yeah, I now, mean, tell tell me how how can you possibly have a healthy? Well, here's the thing. Here's the thing, though. Healthy and unhealthy are impossible for us to really fully quantify. Right. Like you can say like there's there's obviously a huge difference and we can measure like this guy is healthier than this person mm. because of certain markers. Mm. But there's not like what is the true definition of health and, and an unhealthy, unhealthy mind. Yeah. yeah. So there's a lot of variables because, cause here, okay, this is what I would say. Like I think there was a lot of very unhealthy minds in the competitive world, but very healthy bodies in comparison to maybe somebody who is right. really healthy, healthy, Aesthetically. yeah, they're healthy mentally, yeah. but then they're abusing their body. So it's like there, there's a lot of variables well, well, here, and which one's hmm. better or well, worse. That's the thing. Having a, a very, very healthy mind leads to not abusing uh, your body. A very unhealthy mind leads to abusing your body. Well, do you, now, that could be obesity. I, I think that's that's true and it's not true. I think that there's plenty of people with healthy minds that uh, don't have healthy bodies. Really? Yeah, sure. Because a healthy mind could mean, you, could mean the way you view yourself with mm. self-image and, and maybe even your own body image. Well, I guess it's how you classify it. Maybe not optimized, but I, I, don't, I can't perceive somebody being obese- or having lots of physical health. Okay, problems well, obese maybe not, but again, going back to the you know the, the how do you quantify this? That's like, true. What's really unhealthy true. or kind of healthy, or yeah, you know what I'm saying? True. So there's definitely and some they, in the it, middle that are like super mentally tight, put yeah. together, but then they you know if there's anywhere where they kind of fuck off, it's taking care and, of their body. And right? here's the other thing you want to consider also consider is that uh, that it's a relationship that isn't necessarily that isn't one way. So what I mean no. by that is. Uh, you know, you could have an unhealthy body that will lead to issues of the mind mm -hmm. also. Mm -hmm. That happens all the time. In fact, one of the best things you can do if you have issues of the mind like depression or anxiety or something like that is to improve the health of the body. So if I, and, and again, this is again, this is not, uh, this is proven when they do head to head studies on uh, for people with like mild to moderate depression and they'll give them SSRI drugs or whatever, antidepressant drugs, or they'll take a group of people with mild to moderate depression and they don't give them SSRI drugs, but they start them on an exercise program and they change their diet. The fitness and diet regime is as effective in the short term and better in the long term for the, the, the symptoms of depression. So it is this kind of circular thing, and that's why I say it's, it, you can't separate the two. Because well, it's no, all the I, same. I really look at our digestive system and our and our brain like yin and yang. It's it isn't a perfect relationship of give and take. It's not a perfect relationship. It's it's symbiotic, right? They you they utilize each other and they speak to each other. But you know, too much of one could affect the other, and you could still be okay in this area, yeah. but not so. You know, what I'm saying well, that's There's, why I feel like every day we're like in this state of conflict on some level. Like we're always trying to get better, and I think that the people that you can see that are always. Like they, they recognize that nothing can go on autopilot. They're always trying to work on getting better at something. Those are the ones that always stand out to me as, you know, the ones seeking that, that, that place, that place of health. Well, so some interesting things are, are popping up for me. Could the body exist without the mind uh, or would it be alive? Probably not, right? Um, and, and then vice versa, you know, if they put you in, there's these rooms that exist that uh, they've used in studies that are, like they're almost like sensory deprivation chambers or whatever, but they're extreme. There's one room in particular where if you go in there, it absorbs sound so much. It's the most silent uh, thing that exists. And uh, apparently the longest anybody can stay in that room is a matter of minutes because they, they start to it's feel so like foreign or they, what? they start to feel like they go crazy oh, because, really? yeah, because when you disconnect the body from the mind, remember 
your conception of who you are, yourself, your mind. You need to be grounded. It's also something. also involves the senses that you have mm. of touch, smell, sight. When you eliminate all of that and you become this disembodied, you know, existence, um, that's a very interesting thing that I don't think anybody can really understand what that feels like. And I know people have talked about like, oh, I took a really high dose of mushrooms and then I felt like I was separated from my body and all that stuff. Maybe, but I, I don't know. I don't think they can exist as we know them <clears throat> without each other. So it, it's important to understand that like they are the same. They're all, they're one and the same. It's all one. So to try to work on one or to think to yourself like, okay, I've got these mental issues. So I'm just going to focus on the mental side of these issues. Right. You know, that may help, but you're better off looking at the, the whole thing because it all helps. Same thing with the body, you know, as trainers, people come to us to work on their body. <clears throat> we never have anybody. I've never had anybody who comes up to me and says for the first session. Work on mine. Yeah, and yeah. says, hey, listen, uh, I have a bad relationship with bad myself. Mentality. Yeah, I'm yeah. depressed and I, I want you to help me. No, it's I'm fat and I want to lose weight. Now, as I'm training them, guess what I'm working a lot on? Yeah, right. like <laughs> all that. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Yeah. I'm working on all that stuff. And as uh, as a trainer, the most successful I've ever, I, I ever became as a trainer is when I understood that. And I knew that in order for me to be a, a, a good trainer for them, to show them success, it was more than just focusing on their body. It was focusing on that mental aspect as well. In fact, I would argue that the mental aspect that I would help them with as a trainer was more important than even my exercise program. Well, what's interesting to me is I know you guys <laughs> – we had somebody on that you made predictions about uh, the future of fitness oh, yeah. and all that. So for me, my prediction really is that since we've compartmentalized everything all the over all these years, like the next big thing is the brain. You see that with nootropics and everything else, trying to give it like vitamins that all of a sudden I'm going to have this cognitive boost, you know, out of nowhere. Um, but there's going to be ways of actually training and doing things like reactivity and uh, all these different tools that are going to come out, like specifically geared to optimize the brain, yeah. and that's mm -hmm. going to create this fitness health state. I know? believe that. I think I believe that's already happening. I, I agree. It I, is. Yeah. yeah, I believe we see that happening right now. I mean, that's just getting back to the nootropic thing. I mean, look at it's so crazy how out of control it is right now. It's like that's everywhere. It yeah. is a big a fad. Everybody, and it, yeah, it is a huge fad right now. And I'm not anti any of it. I mean, it's no, like, it's great. It's cool. You know. Yeah. What I'm saying but it's like jesus there's so many other but things it's not too. that's not the only thing right like, let's let's not get away from the whole you know what else it reminds me of so when we were in school uh pe and music were part of education they were actually uh, if i'm not mistaken they were required mm -hmm. and then along not that like, shortly after you know we got out of elementary school they started saying no the only thing that's important or that we should make you know compulsory is you know, are these subjects reading math, science, and whatever? Yeah. And they eliminated music and activity, or at least they placed a less a smaller emphasis on it. Yeah, let's get rid, rid of all the creative yeah. stuff. And what's what's funny is now we know for sure that if you're active, if a child is active and moving their body, they don't have to be an athlete, they don't have to be gifted, but if they move their body and they stay active, their cognitive ability improves. Yeah, substantially. M music is another one. Children who play music do far better in uh, stuff that you think is not connected to music, like math. In fact, there's parents who are trying to optimize their <coughs> kids' math skills. It like One simple, that, it's weird, man. It's subconscious, but it really simplifies math. It's just all, it's all connected, man. Yeah. It's all connected. The, if, you're, if you are a brainiac, if you're a scientist, and all you like to do is learn and study and be smart, and you work hard at doing that, one of the things you could do to improve your cognitive ability is get fit. And, and, and that's, again, proven now. Yep. And it, but if I had said that 20 years ago, people would have said, you know, because the whole, it was, uh, what was it, like, the dumb yeah, jocks? That's for the jocks, yeah. Yeah, it makes uh, you stupid or whatever. Heads, yeah. Not true at all. So it's all the same. And man. I would venture to say, I would love to see a study that would compare that with some this same type of person in the same condition uh, to just taking nootropics and see which one would actually enhance them oh, even more. Getting course. in shape would, would enhance that person's. Take some of our YouTube stars and, you know, give them some nootropics. <laughs> See what happens. Yeah. <laughs> they're just they're, you, they'll just be dumb faster. It's uh, it's uh, yeah, no, no nothing's gonna touch. Nothing's gonna touch that. There's not a single. I'll tell you what. The day they invent a pill that can l literally mimic proper nutrition and proper uh, you know fitness or whatever, 
I mean, that'll be a miracle. That'll be like, that'll su- save more lives than anything I think of. Yeah. But we're not even close to doing that. There's no supplement on earth that can come close to, to doing that stuff. I mean, the best nootropic in the world is activity. Even basic activity. If you're studying for something and you want to absorb what you're studying, one of the best things you could do is get up and move yeah. in between studying. Like every 15 minutes, get up and do mm-hmm. some push-ups or stretch or something like that. Or while you're reading... You know, do some some activity. I learned that I, I learned this on accident. You, oh, you know, I tell people that it, w- if you do this, and in the, at the beginning you kind of have to apply it, like you have to actively think about it, whether it be a reminder or whatever that. But it's something that I I learned probably 10, 10 years ago, maybe mm-hmm. more. And I mean, you guys know when we're up when we're up at Reno, we're over and we're shooting. Like you'll see me, I'll get up yeah. and I'll walk. I'll be walking oh, in the yeah. room. Why we're why we're creating or thinking? Because it's like you it get co- sharper and more creative. Way I can I can just tell, and now I can tell. So it's natural. I don't have to think about it. I don't go like, oh, we need to work on a project right now. I need to think clearer. I'm going to get up and start walking around. I just my I just naturally yeah, just, just do it. But yeah. it took me some time first of doing that. Then I could connect the dots. Like, oh shit, I am sharper. I am better when I do move around and do that. And so I've always done that now. Yeah, and uh, exercise and activity we know now um, also stimulates the release of BDNF, brain-derived uh, neurotropic factor, which is kind of a buzzword right now. Because yeah, the, there's supplements coming around that too. Yeah, that say that they do that, but they don't. BDNF, so, that sounds like some porn search. You know, <sighs> like, yeah, BDNF, community. you're thinking of uh, B- BDSM? BD. BDSM? BDSM. That, that sounds that like something that BBW. that sounds like something that Ben Greenfield's increasing by shoving some red light up his nose or, or his something ears. like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. putting in his dick or totally something. Totally optimizing my BDNF. Bro. So <laughs> what what BDNF does is it, it it encourages the growth of new you know pathways in the brain. It's like the smart drug that is naturally produced in your in your brain. Moving and exercising causes the release of that. It's extremely good for the brain uh, to move and exercise. And on the flip. Um, taking care of your mind will, of course, help with the emotional state, the choices you make with your exercise and your diet. If you're in a bad emotional state, even if you really want to work out and eat right, you can become orthorexic or make the wrong decisions. We know this in the fitness industry. So, um, no, health, true health includes all of that stuff. If you have one of those things that is unhealthy, and of course, we're using this broad, you know, generalized umbrella, but if you're unhealthy in the mind, then you're just unhealthy. If you're unhealthy in the body, then you're just unhealthy. So there really isn't, you can't separate the two. Mm. Uh, With that, go to YouTube, subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'm surprised that we have a lot of listeners that still haven't checked out the YouTube channel. It's Look, if you like our podcast, you'll love our YouTube channel. It's different. We put our heart into it. It's different content, different information. So you're not going to get the same thing in both places. You're going to learn more stuff. It's Mind Pump TV on YouTube. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump.